Hey guys, welcome to Art with Ian. Today we're going to be talking about clipping masks, how to use them, and how beneficial they can be in our work. All right, let's get into it. All right, so what I've got here, I've set up a few things so we can look at how the clipping mask works. Um, so I've got a silhouette here that I did of this woman, and I painted space over the top of her, and you can see how it's all messy and gross and outside the lines and all this stuff but with a clipping mask if i apply a clipping mask to this by holding down alt hold down the alt key and then hover between the two layers you see how my icon changes so right now we have a a hand icon and i hold down alt and i hover between and you get the square with the, the down arrow when that comes up, if you click between the two layers, it'll clip them, it'll clip it. And so now I have that space that I painted, but attached to my original silhouette. And so it cleans all those lines up automatically for me. Now, if I wanted to unclip this, I would just hit hold, do the exact same thing only in reverse. So hold the, the alt key and then click between the layers. You'll see the strike through the down arrow now, and that unclips it. Okay, so that's, um, that's one example of how you can use clipping masks, how powerful they are. I'm going to turn that one off. Oh, and also if you wanted to uh, maybe get like a, if you wanted to put like a bloom on something like this, you could, I set that up just like, if you wanted the edges to not feel so harsh, you know, you can do paint over the top after and do that kind of stuff, like a bloom effect or whatever. Anyway, so let's turn that one off. And let's move on to another type of way you can use clipping masks. I've got another demo here. And so I've got this text and you can see the, the font has all these kind of cool, like grimy, kind of gritty texture things happening. And I've got this other, I've got this other layer, an image. I went and found this, this is just a picture. I didn't paint this. I went and found it on like a, um, a royalty free image site. I thought that would be okay to use for just this application. So turn it on and you see that it's clipped in there. So let me unclip it, holding alt, clicking between the layers. That's what it looks like unclipped. It's just a picture of skulls. But I hold down alt, click between the two layers. Make sure I see that icon change from a hand to the square with the down arrow click and there we go clips it and that is super cool so like the image is even inside the the grit like the texture of the font it's all all of it is applied so yeah it's really really neat what you can do with this um, lots of different applications for it so I'm going to turn that one off I've got another one here uh, this is kind of, I'm going to show you kind of how the buildup could work as, as a painting process. So I've got this kind of shape like for an orange. I'll turn my shadow on underneath it. And I, I kind of created a little environment for it too. So here we got this little uh, shape, just a flat color. And then I have created texture over it. And see, you can tell I painted without any regard for staying inside the lines, I was able to blow my texture brush up and paint how I felt like it was getting the texture I wanted. More texture all over the place. A shadow, it's all outside the lines. More shadow, light, extra light, and then a little bit of um, color dodge at the very end there. Now, if I go in, that looks terrible. So, but if I go in here and clip this and just clip each one down, remember holding alt and hovering between the layers and clicking. And then eventually I end up with this, which feels a lot more, you know, it's, it takes all of that all of that messy stuff that I was painting outside my lines and it, and it just clips it all to the original silhouette that I made. So if I turn that off, everything gets turned off because they're all attached to it. 
So let's just do one practical little thing here where I actually paint a, a little tiny bit. Let's turn that off, turn our white background back on. So I've got this texture brush that I created and I've blown it up. Now, if I just, you know, use black or something, if I paint with this a little bit and create kind of like a texture, maybe get some stuff on the outside. So now I've got this cool texture happening here. If I, I could now put anything I want inside this texture. So I've got this painting from a while ago. I did uh, some fan art, um, Metroid fan art that I did. And I'm going to copy this, not the whole image, just kind of focusing on Samus. And come back over here. And I'm going to paste this over the top. Uh, hit Control T to open up the transform options. And I'm just going to size this down and kind of focus the the main image of Samus over the top of this texture. Hit uh, enter to accept the transformation. And so now if I, using this clipping mask tool, if I hold alt and click between these two layers, it will put my image of Samus, my painting, inside the texture I painted. And that is super cool. That's just really cool to be able to, any brush, any texture, anything, any kind of silhouette you create, you can clip an image to it. So, or what if I wanted this to look more like a, like a quick brush stroke with a painting inside of it? We could do that. We could come to the texture, the original, the layer that I created with my brush and go up to filter, blur, and in that, in the options for blur, you'll see motion blur. I'm going to click on that. And just going up and down looks pretty cool, but what if I wanted it to look like a diagonal stroke kind of going with the direction I actually went? I can turn that this way. Sorry about that, that's my alarm. Yeah, let's get that angle just about right. There we go, I think that's good. And then I could turn, as, as you create more space, or as you fill in the spaces, you'll see more and more of the image show through, kind of a thing, you know? So, yeah. So now it kind of looks like a quick brush stroke, and as the brush made the stroke, it allowed the image to kind of show through. So anyways, yeah, so clipping masks are absolutely brilliant. Um, I highly recommend using them. I use them all the time in my work. And you, you might see some artists locking their layers. Um, and you can lock your layer and get a somewhat similar effect. But the, the bonus, the really the major difference in doing clipping masks instead of locking your layers is that it's non-destructive. So if, for example, let's very quickly grab the marquee tool here. If I made, let's say this oval shape, if I made this shape and I locked it, if I go, if I go up here and right here, you can lock the layer. Now, if I do that, you'll see the lock symbol come up right here, this checker image. If I locked the layer, I could go and change my color. I could I could get a color like this and I could paint on it and it won't come out. It'll you know, it'll uh it'll all stay inside here. And that that kind of seems like it's accomplishing the same thing until you get a little ways down the road and you realize that one of the textures you used, you don't really like. You want to get rid of it. You want to start over. Maybe you want to change the opacity on it. Well, this is all locked to the same layer. It's just, I can't go back. It's just the way it is. However, if I had done this on a clipping mask, unlock this really quick. If I had created a new layer and locked it, clipped it, holding alt and clicking between the two layers, and then I had gone ahead and painted some of this texture and stuff on here, I could have gone 
okay, yeah, you know, I kind of like the way that's coming coming out, but it's a little too bold, let's say, and I could just go up here to my opacity and turn the opacity down. Or I could say, I'm kind of liking my what I'm doing with the texture, but the colors don't feel right. I could come over here to Adjustments, Hue Saturation, and just change my colors however I see fit. So, or I could just say, I don't like it at all, and just delete the layer and not be stuck with it. So that's why clipping masks are better than, than locking your layer. Anyways, I hope you got something out of this video. And I will see you guys in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Make sure you ring that bell for notifications of future videos and I'll see you guys in the next one.